Yeah. Yeah. So the question here, uh, especially for young people who have grown up in the echo chamber world of social media, how do you deprogram from that? How do you become able to open to truth, to recognize nuance, to recognize complexity and ambiguity, to be comfortable with that when, when we've been trained to, to source so much of our identity and self-worth from the in-group that says that we're the right ones, we're the good ones. So I think that the initial impulse comes from a discontent. Like, I'm sick of that. Um, this isn't really meeting my needs. This is, feels small-minded, and there's a bigger world out there. And I, and I feel limited and constricted by this, by this echo chamber. So it's a discontent that provides the uh, courage to put down some of these pieces of an identity of uh, as being good and right. Because if you evaluate every new piece of information according to, does this confirm that I'm good and right? then you will never have room for any truth that contradicts existing ways of thinking. And your mind will become smaller and smaller and smaller. You will become habituated to thinking certain thoughts and not others, to seeing the world in one way and not another. If you want your mind to stay supple and you want your intelligence to grow, you have to be willing to make a sacrifice. The sacrifice is of having been right all along. The sacrifice maybe of being right at all. The sacrifice being um, of being better than somebody else, morally or intellectually superior. Once you've made that sacrifice, then you're able to evaluate new information on its own merits, not on does this contribute to my identity as good and right. And that is it's a starting point because a lot of the evaluative filters are unconscious and there's layer after layer after layer of them. But I could suggest some practices, you know, to read things that you violently disagree with and to ask what's true in this or to ask what position would I need to be in and what life history would I have to have and who would I need to be surrounded by to actually believe this as fervently as the person who wrote it. Then you understand what it's like to be somebody else. But this is an exercise I do all the time. I, 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 I say, what if I'm wrong about everything? Like, what if some key piece of my worldview is totally wrong? Then what? What else would be wrong? Or is there maybe a deeper understanding that includes this and its opposite. That says, yeah, this is right under this circumstance and this is right under that circumstance. Or if I take X, Y, and Z for granted, then this would be right. And if I take A, B, and C for granted, then that would be right. So what am I taking for granted here? And why am I taking that for granted? So it becomes a process of self-discovery also not just of intellectual development. <laughs>